Thank you to Keeps for sponsoring today's video. Today we're going to compare the China's best submarine to the United States' best submarine in a one-of-a-kind submarine showdown. This is China's latest Russian-assisted, that's right folks, nuclear submarine, the Type 093 Bravo. We'll be putting it head-to-head -head against the Virginia class, America's best submarine, specifically the Block 4. This is our most modern variant on the Virginia design, and the Block 5 is coming. We'll have a little bit of that at the end of the video. Today, I compare these formidable submarines in a head-to-head -head competition like no other, kind of like how I'm competing to keep my hair on my head. That's right. This is Keeps. Keeps is an online subscription service that is both easy and affordable solution to treat male pattern baldness. I noticed my hair was thinning on the crown of my head about a year ago. And I thought I'd better get used to wearing hats or just covering it up, but there's a better way. Why not keep my own hair, right? So Keeps offers both the FDA approved treatments that are clinically proven to work and a two-in-one gel that combines both treatments. These treatments are 90% effective at treating hair loss and can increase growth by 35%. Most men notice results within six months. I've been using it for a month now, and I've already noticed the hair growth increase. Keeps has helped nearly 1 million men keep their hair and has over 4,500 five-star reviews. In addition to clinically proven treatments, Keeps offers hair thickening shampoo, conditioner, and styling pomade. Hair loss stops with Keeps. And for my special offer to get started, go to keeps.com forward slash subbrief, or just click the link in the description. All right, this is the Type 093 Bravo nuclear submarine, China's most modern lethal nuclear sub. She weighs in at about 7,000 tons and says she can do about 30 knots, which is comparable with modern submarines of this age. And her noise level is measured at about 30 decibels in her quietest lineup. Now, to give that some context, what does that even mean to most of us? That's about as loud as a person whispering in a quiet room. Have you ever been in a theater before the movies start and you hear people talk? talking quietly, it's about that loud. But when you're looking for submarines, you're not in a quiet theater. You're in a very dynamic and often noisy ocean environment. And that gives them the advantage to be able to hide in their quiet lineup. But when they're in their quiet lineup, they're also not doing high-speed maneuvers, launching weapons, and doing uh, other noise-making uh, evolutions. This really is the first quiet submarine, the, the Alpha and Bravo of this series, uh, it, that, that China's ever built. So let's go over the entire family. This is the Type 093 family. The first version, Type 093, was commissioned in 2006, and they built two of them. The second one was commissioned in 2007, and it was really nothing to write home about. They were very noisy submarines back then. So 093 did not start off very well. They just needed new nuclear submarines to replace the aging Han submarine that had been serving the Navy for, for decades, the, the Chinese Navy. Then there was a pause in construction. They built two that were noisy, put them to sea. They worked, they functioned, they're safe, uh, but they didn't build any more for a while. And then 2012 came along and the Type 093 uh, Alpha was commissioned and she was different in one major way. She was actually quiet. She was the one that has that 30 decibel uh, level. And what we had realized had happened is Russia had sent a team of engineers to China to help them design sound silencing and integrate sound silencing techniques into their Type 093 design, and it worked. So all the machinery in the submarine, miles and miles of piping and, and equipment uh, was loaded onto sound absorbing mounts. That was step one. Then all the pipes connecting everything, whether it was an air system or a fluid system, it didn't matter, they were all hung with vibration isolation hangers. Pipes were wrapped in harmonic reducing insulators and the inside of the hull, not the outside, the inside was lined with an acoustic absorbing material. So any noise that was generated beyond these vibration isolation mechanisms would be kept inside the sub and was not transmitted to the water and it worked. There's no metal to metal contact on the type 093 Alpha and Bravo without a resilient mount. And it took them four years to get it right and they did. The entire submarine was much quieter now. So here is the Type 093 that the uh, Russian engineers assisted the Chinese engineers with building, and they only built one, one of a kind, and then there was another pause. They went back to the drawing board for even more improvements. In 2016, the first of three Type 093 Bravos were commissioned, and these were the complete package. This was a very quiet submarine with an improved communication system, 
for fleet coordination, a combat integration system that incorporated uh, a new sonar array, a sonar flank array, and a sonar toad array. So she had the complete short range passive active package and the long range passive package combined with a very quiet submarine design. And it worked. They have three of these. They're commissioned right now. H.I. Sutton has a great cutaway drawing that he made on his Covert Shores website. I would recommend you guys go check it out. He also has a cute or short little uh, article that goes with it. Uh, I often put little Where's Waldo cartoons in, in this for him because uh, I think it looks like a Where's Waldo drawing. But uh, the big thing to take away from this drawing here is that it can shoot at least nine different weapons. And this is everything from cruise missiles that are both subsonic and supersonic, heavyweight torpedoes, and mines. So not only does she have a complete combat system package, she has a wide magazine or very a, a varied magazine of weapons to choose from every time she deploys. Now, the Achilles heel of the Type 093 Bravo being such a complex and formidable submarine is that it's only built here in the Bohai Shipyard Heavy Industry Company in Northern China. Right now, they have one assembly hall. It's very large, but it's only one, and it's busy building the next generation ballistic missile submarine for China. No attack submarines are being built right now in this shipyard. And it's the only shipyard that can build the Shang uh, Type 093 Bravo, which means they only have six of these submarines. Two of them are so noisy, they would be useless in modern naval warfare. One submarine is very quiet, but doesn't have the combat systems package with the advanced sonar system for long range detection. So they could send it to sea, but it would be limited in capability. And there are three submarines that have the complete package and they're not building anymore. So that's the Shang 093 Bravo, capable submarine, limited numbers, not building anymore right now. This, my friends, is the Virginia class submarine, America's top of the line, built right here in Groton, Connecticut. It's actually New London, Connecticut, but yeah. Uh, they also have, uh, they build the reactors up in Rhode Island. They ship them down to uh, Groton, Connecticut, I guess it is, because it's on that side of the river. Uh, we also build them at, uh, down there in Virginia too. So we have two shipyards that build the Virginia class. We commission two a year. Uh, she measures in at 7,800 tons of a submarine, which is, man, she's a big girl. She's, she's a lot bigger than the 688 that I was on. But what's really incredible about her is her freaking engine room. And obviously I cannot talk about her engine room at all. I know everybody at the NSA just freaked the hell out when I mentioned engine room. So I'll just read from the Wikipedia page, all right? Because that's really all I'm allowed to say. She has 280,000 shaft horsepower, which is a lot of freaking horsepower. This ship is fast, man. She can go through the water much faster than anyone expects. And, but again, all that stuff is not public knowledge. I'll just say this, I've been in the engine room and it is like a world wonder. It is an engineering marvel. And that's no understand, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating here. It really is. Like it's a temple to engineering so much so that when you enter the engine room, you should take your shoes off and give thanks because it's a religious experience. It is amazing that they've combined such advanced science and technology with practical engineering and made it real. I mean, they made it work. They made it fast and it's so quiet. I have been, and I'm gonna be careful with the story, so everybody calm down, but I've been in an engine room um, at flank speed on board a submarine and you can feel the energy. It is just palpable. It, it, it radiates uh, power while you're there. It's pretty incredible. And then it's so quiet. You're in, the engine room of something moving at really fast speed submerged. And you can feel the heartbeat, if you will, of the, of the submarine. And it's, it's just so quiet. It, it, it will blow your mind. It's worth joining the Navy, volunteering for submarines, just to have that experience alone. It's that life-changing. It's incredible. Wikipedia says she does faster than 25 knots. That's true, it is faster. It's much faster. As far as sound silencing goes, we've been doing the sound silencing thing since the 1960s, man. It, back in the long ago. We wrote the book on sound silencing because I literally read it. Yes, there is a book for sound silencing. It's surprisingly not that big because the concept is not that complex. It's in practice and maintaining it that is 
very uh, challenging here. So we've been doing sound silencing that the Chinese began doing in 2012 for decades. And we've been doing it very well, improving it since then. I mean, it's been so long that there might have been a few German defectors involved in writing our sound silencing program. Yeah. They didn't just take us to the moon, folks. Nope. <laughs> okay. Weapons. You want to talk about weapons? Holy, like the Virginia carries a lot more weapons than the Shangs. It's about a two to one ratio. We shoot the advanced capability Mark 48 uh, torpedo. I think we're up to like mod nine now, but uh, the Wikipedia says mod six. Either way, it's a badass weapon. I have been chased by an ad cap Mark 48 down at the range in the Bahamas. And it's freaking terrifying because you can't get away from it. We have the best decoys in the world. We're super fast submarines. We're chucking countermeasures left and right that make sounds you've never heard before and the torpedo don't care. It doesn't care. It's going to come and sink you. And that's what it does. It's very good at it. And it's freaking horrifying. And let's talk about harpoons. So the harpoon anti-ship missile can reach over the horizon and hit you. We've had that, I think, since the 70s and we've been improving it since then. But word on the street is, and I am not allowed to confirm this, I've been instructed that I cannot confirm that this is happening. But there is talk, there are rumors that the Naval Strike Missile, the NSM, is coming to the United States Navy Submarine Force. Our submarines are going to start launching the NSMs allegedly very soon. Okay, and the Virginia class has 12 VLS tubes before that abomination of Block 5 comes out, which is going to be like a school bus for Tomahawks, all sitting back there in their little school bus seats being taken to the battle. You know, that thing is more of a tomahawk carrying machine transit vehicle than this block force submarine is this thing is a submarine hunter and killer and it's very good at what it does but it also carries 12 vls tomahawks uh, that can deliver freedom out of range of in excess of 500 nautical miles the same day that's something not even amazon can do they don't guarantee that there's no prime subscription for that and the tomahawk anti-ship missile is back in business baby I don't know what happened in the 1990s, but apparently we signed some kind of agreement with Russia that took Tomahawk anti-ship missiles off the table. We still had the land attack that are very famous and everyone knows about, but there was also an anti-ship variant too. But those were taken out of our inventory for some agreement reasons. Well, apparently that agreement no longer applies because it's back. Congress has approved the Tomahawk anti-ship missile, and this thing is pretty wicked. Without going into any specifics, just know that it, it is subsonic, okay, and it's not as stealthy as the NSM is, but it has other things that it can do, like attack a target from different directions with one volley, just to mention one thing, and it's so much more than that. So weapons-wise, we eclipse the Shang in number, and in capability. And I swear to God, if that Mark 48 ever gets a sniff of you, you are gone. You might as well go to the surface and start texting your loved ones because it's gonna be the last thing that they hear. It's vicious. So the fact is China only has three Type 093 Bravos and we have over 30 Virginias and we're building two a year. One comes out of Connecticut, the other one comes out of Virginia. They're not building any more shanks. They're Hall that their assembly building that builds the Shanks is building ballistic missiles submarines right now. So not only is the Virginia class generations ahead of the type 093 Bravo in a naval war with China, our submarine fleet will sink the PLAN as fast as we can find them. Hair loss stops with Keeps. For my special offer to get started, go to keeps.com forward slash subbrief or just click the link in the description.